There are LLMs everywhere, and the really good ones come from the big kahunas like OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google. These large language models are really impressive and they're changing the world as we know it. But there's one problem. If you're familiar with the now all-time classic cartoon, SpongeBob SquarePants, then you know exactly what a Krabby Patty is. Yeah, you may know what it is, but you have no idea to this day what's in the secret formula that creates it. And that's exactly the situation with the big company's large language models. They're gatekeeping their training data and code, and everyone else is doomed to Plankton's fate, trying endlessly to get that formula. But what if I told you there was an open source LLM named H2O GPT that's really good and exposes its own secret formula to the world? We look at this model and its secret formula on today's episode of AI Focus, and I'll even try it out for myself and see how it compares to the big bad LLMs. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. LLMs like OpenAI's GPT-4 are very impressive with their little language skills, but it's not all unicorns and rainbows. There's still the whole unauthorized use of copyrighted data issue and the whole biased and harmful text thing. Well, there's a company called H2O AI, and they wanted me to let you know to hold their beer. This company has built several world-class machine learning, deep learning, and AI platforms over the past decade as open source software and used mostly open source software to do it. I mean, I hear this company's employees just walk around all day with their flies open. They really love open source and their customers really love them. So it was only a matter of time before they created an open source GPT model. QH2O AI's H2O GPT, a suite of open source code repositories for the creation and use of LLMs based on generative pre-trained performers. It's GPT but naked, baby. There's nothing to hide. In addition, seven fine-tuned models from 7 to 40 billion parameters are ready for commercial use under Apache 2.0 licenses, which includes a 100% private document search that uses natural language. H2O AI hopes to democratize AI with this effort and lower the barrier to entry thereby pushing innovation in the space. The company believes there should be GPT models everywhere because they can be applied to healthcare, education, and pretty much an endless variety of use cases. But GPT-4 is really amazing, so why switch over to something less amazing? In the paper from H2O AI, they list four reasons why big closed source AI models are limited. First is data privacy and security. Using hosted LLMs requires your data to be sent to external servers, so you really have to watch what you divulge, which limits certain occupations with strict regulations. Second is dependency and customization. Hosted LLMs don't allow for customization and require the user to depend on their infrastructure. Open source LLMs allow for modification of the code, can run on other infrastructures and can be tailored to do whatever a user wants. Third is cost and scalability. Open source LLMs are generally more cost effective and can scale without having to worry about additional fees from a provider. And finally, hosted LLMs could be subject to downtime, whereas open source models can be run privately, ensuring uninterrupted access. The advantages of a good open source LLM are pretty clear. Now before we get into the secret formula, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the secret formula. It starts with a foundational model that can be fine-tuned to hold conversations. The largest foundational models used for H2O GPT were the GPT Neo X20B and the Falcon 40B. Now that we have the LLMs, it's time to fine-tune them. And to do so, input and output pairs were provided. The more sophisticated the prompts, the more sophisticated the model would be, and if all prompts were brief, you would have a model that's very brief in general. After a while, the model gets the hang of the style of fine-tuning, and later in the fine-tuning process comes data filtering and pre-processing, where profane responses, overlong dialogue, and incomplete sentences are removed. So far, there are 1800 lines of code for data processing and cleaning, and they're all available on the GitHub repository. These lines of code give you the ability to fine-tune models on your own. They weren't lying about being transparent and open. But moving on, 
Most of the H2O GPT models were trained on the Open Assistant dataset, which contains high quality conversational data from humans. After fine tuning models, you get conversations like the one here. Feel free to pause and read it. There's endless details in the paper about how they created their model, but I'm going to skip ahead to everything included in the H2O ecosystem because these tools are quite mind blowing. First are the fully usable code, data, and models. These models, by the way, can all be found in Hugging Face. Next is the code for state of the art fine tuning, which I briefly glossed over. And third is the code for a whole chatbot you can run on GPU servers. The chatbot has a pretty sleek user interface, comparable to GPT-4, and supports any open source model from Hugging Face. Fourth is the code for natural language based document search system. This is cool because it eliminates hallucinations by giving a user the ability to provide source content as context when asking a question. And it also ingests various document types. And lastly is a, get this, a no code fine tuning framework. Literally anyone can fine tune an LLM with this with no knowledge of code needed, which is absolutely nuts. The framework consists of a user interface for non code fine tuning and a command line for code fine tuning. It supports various fine tuning techniques like LoRa and users can track and compare model performance visually using the software. As you can see here, when it comes to common sense reasoning tasks, H2O GPT isn't as good as the closed source alternatives, but the paper adds that this will continue to improve with more and more collaboration in the open source community. One weakness lies in mathematics and logic. I've tested a lot of the open source models on my channel. And I do find that these models still struggle to find correct answers in these areas particularly. Other problem areas include code completion, factual correctness, and chain of thought reasoning. However, the model did show impressive capabilities in the areas of creativity, summarization, general chat, private document chat, and rephrasing that did not require significant prompt engineering. So I'm going to try out H2O GPT right now by going to gpt.h2o.ai. As you can see, the interface is pretty sleek. And what's cool is when you ask a question, you'll get responses from each model at the same time. And you'll notice that they added foundational models from ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo and Llama, which is interesting. So I'm gonna do four things. First, I'm gonna test out that private document search feature. Then I'm gonna ask a simple factual question, then an algebraic question, and then I'm gonna ask a reasoning problem. Well, let's see how it does. So here in this section, you can actually see the private document search. And I'm going to try it right now because I've never used this type of feature with any AI. I'm going to go find a research paper and I'm going to ask it to summarize it within three sentences and see what happens. I'll enter the link here now to enter my prompt. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a very general question and the AI should be able to use the link that I submitted for context, which should, like I said, eliminate hallucination. Everything should be factual and come from the paper. Let's see what work has been done for AI in semantics. And as you can see, every single model just fired off an answer. We got one from the Falcon 7B, one from the Falcon 40B, one from Mosaic MPT 30B, one from Llama, one from GPT 3.5 Turbo. And it's very impressive. It all fired off at the same time. Now, whether it gathered its information from my actual link, I don't know, but I'm assuming it has. All right, let's try a simple fact question. Who was the president in 1909? All right, most of these say William Howard Taft. Let me do a quick Google search and it is William Howard Taft. Now, the Falcon 7B model actually said that the president was Theodore Roosevelt during that time, which is wrong. Here's an example of what the paper talked about. Mistakes in factual information. The MPT-30B model from Mosaic got it wrong. Okay, but not bad all around. Let's try some algebra. I'm gonna ask it to simplify this expression. And the correct answer is 6M plus four. Let's see who got it right. Wrong, wrong. And so the last two HTO GPTs with the foundational models of Llama 65B and GPT 3.5 Turbo actually got it right. All right, let's do this simple logical problem to close it out and see how it does. Tanya is older than Eric. Cliff is older than Tanya. Eric is older than Cliff. If the first two statements are true, the third statement is what? And the answer, just so you know, is false. We got true, false, not necessarily true. Okay. Kuna says false with an explanation, which is impressive. Llama says false. And GPT 3.5 Turbo says false. This is not bad. 
Everyone got it right except for the small Falcon 7B, which is really impressive. Okay, H2O GPT. It was to show that models like these are not final products, but serve as transparent springboards into what's possible. They're like playgrounds where independent researchers can tinker around and potentially innovate in the open. The most important takeaway from this project is the cutting edge method of data preparation and fine tuning used on these LLMs to create H2O GPT. In the future, H2O AI plans to improve H2O GPT by doing a few things, including improving the private document search even more and applying self alignment. Personally, I'm excited to see where the open source community can take these models in the future. What do you think is possible with open source LLMs at our fingertips? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, click a video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.